Hang on guys, we can't start the video yet. What's going on guys? Today we have the Thermaltake View 27 new chassis that they have released. It is a budget case, of course, but it's a lot different to most cases that are out on the market. And I'm here to tell you guys why. The Thermal Take View 27, Thermal Take's new budget case, guys, coming in at 90 Australian dollars. Now, this case is made out of steel for the main sort of framework, and then we've got plastic at the front and on the bottom. But with the many features that this case has to offer, $90 is actually a pretty good price point, especially if aesthetics is one of your main focus points when it comes to building a PC. So starting right off, we can all see the window. It is viewable from the top and from here. It is a gull wing design. It's got a nice curvature coming down instead of the square edge, looking nice and clean and creating a really nice aesthetic to the actual design of the case. With the top being taken up by windows, that means that we have lost some exhaust areas. Now, we all know heat rises, so what has been done to combat this? Now, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on when we take a look at the inside of the case. But we now know that this case does favor former over function. So the whole case is a matte finish except for this front panel here. This is made out of plastic but it gives it a nice tempered glass feel. It really brings a premium sort of look to it and makes the case look more expensive than it actually is. I really do like this however you're going to be getting a lot of fingerprints on this front panel if you have to touch it all the time. Now we do not have any bay drives in this and this is where those compromises are made for a budget case. Now a lot of people won't want this case if they still do use those bay devices. A lot of the compromises here have been that they took out the bay drive to accommodate for more cooling. Seems that the top of the case was taken up by viewing. On the front of the case, we do have one USB 3 and two USB 2. And we also have our audio jacks, power and reset. The back of the case is just your standard panel with two thumb screws to take it off. When taking the panel off, it does not sit in place like a couple of the newer design cases. It'll drop, so just be wary of that if you're accessing the back panel. So at the back of the case, we have the whole design being open. It accommodates for more ventilation outside of the case. Seems that the top panel is covered by viewing angles. We do have our regular PCIe slots, but we've also got two vertical ones. Now, I did say this case is all about aesthetics in your system. This is for vertically mounting your GPU, so you can view it from the front through that nice, massive acrylic window. The front window is also secure by four thumb screws, as you can see right here, two up the top and two down the sides. It's got a little handle here as well, so you won't have to actually touch the acrylic or anything like that to put fingerprints on it. You can just pull it off like so, keeping it nice and clean. All right, let's take a look at the inside. Taking a look at the inside of this case, we have room for your standard ATX size motherboard. We've got plenty of holes to route the cables. Unfortunately, no grommets come with them. I guess this is a compromise for the $90 price point of this budget case. We also have mounting positions for three two and a half inch drives. So you can have them all on full view through the front window mounted to the back of this wall. We have a power supply shroud to hide all of the cables and the power supply, but we also have room for mounting one 120 millimeter radiator or one fan on the bottom of this power supply shroud. On the inside, as we said before, we have two PCI brackets for mounting a GPU vertically. This will really help for a nice viewing angle of the whole GPU. We've also got this bracket here, which supports the riser cable coming up and supports the GPU in place. Helps to prevent a bit of sag as well. On the PSU shroud, we do have holes for your I.O. cables to come up and straight into the motherboard. Nice clean cable management. A lot of cases these days don't seem to think about that. So the 
cables will actually have to route along the top of the case, making it not real pleasing to the eye. We do have a bracket over the far edge here, which you can remove to accommodate for a bigger size radiator. As it stands right now, this can take a 240 millimeter radiator. By removing this panel, you can fit a 360 millimeter radiator, improving your cooling potential within this case. The back design is all open air with all of the holes through the back panel, sort of accommodates for that loss of ventilation up the top of the case with it being a viewing platform instead. The case does come with one pre-installed fan, so you are going to have to purchase more fans for the front of the case. Again, coming down to those budget reasons, this is a stock thermal take fan, so whether or not you want to upgrade that or not, that is up to you guys, but it does come with the one thermal take fan pre-installed in the rear. The front of the case does come with a removable dust filter, as does the power supply cover underneath with it simply coming out like so. You can clean it, put it back in, reuse it, no troubles there. It is a nice, plain, simple black design on the inside, so it will work with any color theme that you wish. You could even have like a nice logo at the front here if you wanted to. It's a nice open space. It'll be in full viewing angle with the nice acrylic window. So perhaps getting a nice design there would really enhance the aesthetics of your build. The case does feel nice and sturdy with not a lot of flex in it. It's a nice, strong, structure even with the window taken off so even though the whole front of the case is a closed design the side bits here are actually fully dedicated to ventilation and there is actually quite a thickness to it this is all protected with dust filters it comes around the front and around the back so it lets more air in trying to accommodate for that air loss as we've said before and it brings air in and the ventilation points are at the back and you could also put a fan down the bottom here to help ventilate out some of the air as well. So even though that the window does come around the top and the front, there's still plenty of ventilation to cool this system. Now, while we are still looking at the front of the case, I just wanted to mention a few points here that you can have a max GPU length of 410 millimeters. Now that is taking into account that you have no fans on the front here. So if you wanted to add fan thickness, say 25 millimeters, you just deduct that from that. It will fit all standard GPU sizes. You can have a CPU cooler with a 150 55 millimeter clearance plenty of room there so you shouldn't be too worried about all of that we do have room for a 180 millimeter psu on the inside of this power supply cover here the case stands at 508 millimeters tall 479 millimeters wide and 201 millimeters in depth and the case also weighs 6.4 kilograms at the back of the case we have room for mounting one more ssd we've got plenty of cable mounting management holes here where the zip ties can go through a lot of them all over the build so it's really nice to see that at the back you can route your cables wherever you like with no mess at all plenty of cable management room as well with a nice decent size thickness before you actually hit the motherboard tray so plenty of room there plus you've got the bottom compartment here where you can shove your cables as well now i did say that this can take a 180 millimeter power supply but if you feel like removing these hard drive bays, that even further increases the distance. You've got the whole compartment to play with for cable management. Speaking of hard drive bays, we have two hard drive bays located down the bottom here, hidden away from sight so you don't have to see them within the build. A nice open back design for ease of access to the motherboard when installing, say, your CPU coolers and, you know, water cooling stuff and things like that. So it's a really good feature to have with this build. But other than that, it's just standard at the back as with most cases these days. Down the bottom, the power supply has some supporting brackets here. It's got some rubber feet sticking up for the power supply to sit on. Helps it and stops it from sagging when it's inside the case. I know a lot of the cases, you just put the power supply in, you do the screws up and it's just sitting there with no support underneath. So it's great that they've added these as an addition to the case and it helps to prevent stress on the power supply bracket. Bottom of the case, Nice, clean, simple design. It's got some nice rubber feet, stop it from slipping. It's got a raised design there, so I wouldn't worry too much if you actually needed to put this on carpet. I still wouldn't, but I wouldn't worry if you needed to, because this is raised enough so that it allows for air to get in and actually ventilate the system. I mean, you've got a good three centimeters before you're actually at this bottom panel here, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So what do you guys think about this case? 
Personally, I like it. I think it offers a lot for the price point. I think it has a nice aesthetically pleasing design with a full view and it's something a bit different to every other case out there. It has a nice premium design to it with the curvature and the addition of that plastic panel at the front that looks like tempered glass. Cable management is taken care of. We've got the power supply cover and the grommet holes. And we've got the option of vertically mounting our GPUs. Personally though, I do think that this large acrylic window would become a massive dust and fingerprint magnet. I mean, just sitting here now, you guys saw that I only just took the plastic film off at the beginning of the video, and it has collected quite a fair bit of dust on the window since then. One thing that you would have to be cautious of is if you are gonna wipe that dust off, you need to be careful that you don't wipe too hard because it will create scuff marks. Acrylic is a soft plastic, and over time cleaning it, it's just gonna create scratches and everything on it. So you need to be very careful with that. But hey, what do you guys think about this case? Let me know in the comments below. Leave a like on the video and subscribe guys. Check out more of our other reviews that we have on the channel. We've got custom PCs, we've got modding tutorials, we've got liquid cooling tutorials, we've got everything guys. So check all of them out. Let me know what you guys think of this case. We're gonna be doing a build in this case very soon. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks guys.